Sports fans, especially the MMA fans, love a one-punch knockout. It's entertaining and people go wild when they see it. However, in the real world of environment, it is much different. And as it should be. In MMA, there are padded floors to break the fall. On-site medical staff to assist when things go really wrong. However, Nothing compares to how scary seeing a one-punch incident happen in public and how quickly it can change someone's life forever. G'day everyone, welcome to Bedtime Crime, a channel dedicated to serial killer stories, murder stories and much, much more. If this is the kind of content you're into, then please leave a like and subscribe. Every subscriber is a step closer to improving this channel. So let's get into today's story. In America, it's known as the Sucker Punch. In Australia, it used to be known as the King Hit, but now is named the Coward Punch. A blindsided punch that is usually executed without the receiver being able to defend themselves. A lot of us condemn fighting in the streets. But I think a large majority of us will say that if we have to fight, it should be fair. And there is nothing more unfair than when someone punches you without you at least being aware. According to research by the Victorian Institute of Forensic Medicine, more than 170 Australians have died from coward punching assaults since 2000. That's around 7 to 8 people a year. It doesn't sound like a lot. I mean, there are fights that happen daily all over the world. Most of them end in someone breaking up the fight. But I think the reason why it gets so much media attention and why it causes public outrage is we the public are disgusted that someone wasn't given their right to protect themselves. Violence against children, the disabled or animals always gets us extremely riled up. This is due to their vulnerability. It's not the same, but coward punch victims are just as vulnerable. Which is what happened to 22-year-old Jaden Walker on May 6th, 2017 in Melbourne, Australia. Melbourne, known for its hip bars and cafes, hosts a nightlife full of drunk people but who are usually quite friendly. Jaden Walker and friends were on a night out in the beautiful city. To the public, Jaden just seemed like an average Australian bloke. Jaden's father, John, told reporters that all Jaden wanted to do is save some money, go traveling, and start up his own business. But there was no denying that Jaden also liked to go out and have a good night with mates and get on the booze. Also, out that same night was another local. 26-year-old and father of three, Richard Vincic. Vincic went out with a couple of friends to watch the AFL, a popular football code here in Australia. That night was the night that Vincic was supposed to really enjoy as he was, quote, let off the leash by his partner. Which means in his world, to go out and get hammered and take some speed. Vincic ended up at the Cherry Bar in ACDC Lane. There he met up with a girl and did some speed with her in the bathroom. Also at the bar was Jaden Walker. Jaden spots the girl Vincic is with and notices that it's a girl that he used to see. Reports say that Jaden got upset at the sight of seeing Vincic and the girl he used to see making out. Eventually, Jaden Vincek, the girl he was with, and other friends ended outside the Chanel clothing store on Russell Street. The group gathered around, and words were exchanged between Jaden and Vincek. Shake my hand. Shake my hand, you c I'm not a dog. Grab my hand like that, and I'll hit ya. Do what I want, mate. At this point in time, the girl that Vincic was with, the same girl that Jaden used to see, 
tried to break up the hostile atmosphere between the two. But only moments later, and caught here on CCTV, Finsek struck Jaden on his left cheek. Jaden falls back on his head, hitting the ground hard. Some of us, including myself, have heard that sound before, and it is spine tingling. A thud that doesn't make an echo, but feels like it does. After Jaden falls to the ground, Finzik is seen fleeing the scene. Two doctors who happened to be passing by assisted Jaden until paramedics came and he was transported to the hospital. Jaden suffered a fractured skull and bleeding on the brain and remained unconscious until his life support was switched off and he died in hospital on May 12th. During Finzik's court hearing, Finzik's defense lawyer denied it was a so-called coward punch, saying it wasn't a heavy blow and the victim's fall was worse by the fact that Jaden was drunk. Quote unquote, if Jaden had not had the level of alcohol content, he would not have fallen or he would have protected his fall. Now, whether that be true or not, I, a criminology undergraduate, with no experience in law, would have to somewhat disagree. The power of which a punch is thrown doesn't define whether it is a coward punch or not. What defines a coward punch is a blindsided punch. A punch where the receiver was unaware it was coming. An unfair punch that only a coward would take. Though in Jaden's state, he would have had a slower reaction to the punch. But if hit in a certain way, you are still able to lose your footing and fall back on your head, drunk or not. You don't have to be intoxicated to be knocked out. Though this story seems to paint Vincic as a bad person, and what he did was careless, reckless, thoughtless, among many other words, it must be said that it is reported that Vincic had shown genuine remorse. While Jaden was on life support, Vincic called the police and hospital every day to check on Jaden until his death. He wrote a letter to the family, apologizing for what he had done. Now, many people might say he's only sorry that he was caught. But the judge took Vincic's remorse into account when charging him. The judge on the case recognized that Vincic had, quote, very good prospects for rehabilitation. Vincic had a supportive partner and also had three children. The youngest at the time was still a baby. Saying all that though, it just took a matter of seconds to change his life and the Walker family's lives forever. Richard Vincic was sentenced to eight years in jail with the possibility of parole in five years. Positively, we have seen a decrease in coward punching cases. A research showed that yearly deaths decreased more than 50% from 14 in 2012 to 6 in 2018. But a surprising fact coming out of the study was where these coward punching acts took place. It seems like these coward punch incidents would be mainly seen in places where there is alcohol involved and usually young testosterone filled men ready to prove to the world how tough they are. And that's mainly what we saw in the news in Australia. But the study revealed that alcohol wasn't always a factor. In fact, the offender would be a neighbor or housemate rather than a drunk stranger. And 70% of fatal coward punching attacks took place in settings that include homes, footpaths, and train stations which is where semi-pro football slash soccer British expat Danny Hodgson was attacked. Danny Hodgson is a talented 26-year-old man who played for ECU Joondalup in Western Australia's National Premier League. He won a premiership and a Golden Boot award. He had plans to go pro until one day. Danny was on his way home from end-of-season celebrations on the 5th of September 2021. Danny was walking through a Perth train station when a teenage male approached him. 
Danny being the friendly person he was, went to shake hands with the 16 year old male. But the teen clenched his fist and then punched Danny knocking him to the ground. Danny was rushed to the Royal Perth Hospital leaving him with a catastrophic brain injury. The 16 year old is supposed to be known by the police for other run-ins with the law. The teen was on bail for 23 charges when he attacked Hodgson and was breaching a curfew at the time of the attack. His charges before the punch include loitering in the city, stealing alcohol, repeatedly breaching bail and curfew and attacking strangers for no reason. A teenager out of control. Luckily for Danny, he did survive the cowardly attack. But this is only after he spent weeks in an induced coma with bleeding to the brain and skull fractures. He suffered severe brain hemorrhaging and was in intensive care for three months. This story at one point took over the football slash soccer world. Messages from all over the world made their way to Danny, but most notably from Manchester United legend Cristiano Ronaldo. Hi Danny, I just hear about your history. I hope you get well soon and I, I invite you for you to come to one of games in Manchester. So get well soon my friend. Take care. Bye bye. After seven months of intensive treatment, Danny left the hospital on the 18th of March 2022. He attended a game of his beloved Perth Red Star FC and was happy to be back. Let's hope his recovery leads him down a road where he can one day play again. The teenage male was sentenced to three years and eight months in juvenile detention. Do you think this is enough, given the age of the teenager? Though this story ends well for Danny, some are not so lucky, like Jaden and countless other stories. A lot of us may think we are unable to kill someone, but we are woken up to the reality that sometimes all it takes is just one cowardly punch. If you would like to donate to victims of coward punching, please check out the Coward Punch Campaign website. Thank you for watching Bedtime Crime. If you enjoyed this story, please check out the others I have on my channel. A like and subscribe to the channel would be much appreciated. Every subscriber helps this channel create better content. Thank you again, and we'll see you next time.